go up there. Why not? I can't climb this. Get up there, Steve. Come on. No. <laughs> You're so dumb. All right, I'm going up. Fuck it. But right now, they might be out. What do you think they're out doing? They're at a bar? Happy hour? Wait, should we get the ladder so we can both go up there? Be careful. How do you think we're fitting up there? We need a, gun, a, a knife or some shit. We're going to have to use a, my sword. My sand. Why? This is all we got. I'll tell all my bitches, break them down. Bag it up. Yo, like, yo. Oh, oh shit! Sure. There's something in up there. Is Are you sure? Right? Yeah. Yo, that fucking thing, dude. <laughs> why did you fucking <laughs> throw this thing off? I stick the sword up there. Yeah. You sure, there's yeah. something up there. Oh, I, I, I freaked myself out. You heard it though, right? No. Oh. Well, yeah, but I heard. I, maybe you just slid it onto the fucking thing. Yo, I feel like something's gonna. Yeah, you want to go, go up there? first? <laughs> no. It's right. I can get okay. it. Yo, I'm so scared. <laughs> No. Did you break it? It's dented. Dude, what if it's right here and it's flat? That's what I'm I saying. I don't have insurance right now. Mm -hmm. I don't health insurance. I don't think the thing is... I'm so scared. You want me to look up there? He's going with the camera. Gotta do it. I'm right here, so if it comes out, I'm, like, I'm like gonna drop. We should put a bed underneath me for... Me the, the <laughs> this is a good idea. Oh, yeah. You too. You, oh, I feel like I heard something. Don't, no, flip the thing. Flip the thing so you can see. Like real as hell. Oh fuck, dude, that's way too scary. You yeah, nailed me, man. No, because we can look at it. Ah! We can look at it after. I feel like we're gonna replay this, and we're gonna see like a dead body <laughs> like, looking at us. I'm fucking. There's a big thing on right here, and I can't see over it. I feel like it would have made a move by now. Right there. To hurt us, I think so. Really? Now I want to go look up. Just there. fucking broke this shit while we're trying to get up there. It's something that lives up there. It comes and goes as it pleases. Mama Perk is showing up. Look at my mom. You see said Nick up there. Just man up. You know this animal's up here. Yeah, uh, it's all scratched up. Right. The screen is, is torn. Yeah. That's nice. Yo, that guy, uh, XXX Tentation, kind of really good. I kind of bunched him in with all the new age rappers that are just like ignorant and I hate their music, but I would highly suggest checking out X -ten -ten XXXXXXX Tentation. Yeah. I'm insane, wanna put 10 shots in my brain I've been trying to bust things, can't change Switch so up the same time, I'm tank, you just ain't playing, get a phone call Press through the break bomb, but my uncle playing with a slip knot Put some out of stress, got me fucked up, been fucked up Since I come out, I've been feeling pain, just
Yeah, so that guy, uh, I really like him as an artist. You can go follow me on Spotify if you want playlists. I got a bunch of playlists on there. Workout, Summer Playlist, Darty Mark Season Playlist, obviously, In Your Feels Playlist. I think my username is NAE825. What songs that I have going? My favorite is Sad, like in Trump. Sad with an exclamation point. Changes, Everybody Dies in Their Nightmares, and Jocelyn Flores. Go check those songs out. Let me know what you think. Maybe I don't understand this. You're changing, I can't stand it. My heart can't take this damage. And the way I feel, can't stand it. Mm, maybe I don't understand this. You're changing, I can't stand it. Another thing, while I'm touching on music, we gotta touch on some other entertainment kind of things. I'm reading this book called The Power of Now. This book's kind of crazy. I heard a lot about it. It's by Eckhart Tolle. I don't know how to say that. Eckhart Tolle. I'll link it in the description. Power of Now. Supposedly, it's one of the most transformational books ever written. It sold over, I don't know, a billion copies. Oprah. It can transform your thinking. The result, more joy right now. Very highly recognized in the publishing industry. And I'm only about 50 pages into it, about 200 pages. A lot of it is like the basis around the way Gandhi thought. And it's kind of crazy. And I'm kind of catching on to the point of the book and, and like what it's preaching. It talks about the now about focusing on the now and not so much, uh, well not not so much, but not at all on the past or the future. If I could break it down simply, and I'm not, I'm not the best person to talk about this. When I first heard it, I was like, yeah, it's very like spiritual and I'm not really like a super spiritual person. Like I, I'm intact with my emotions sometimes and like I am probably more spiritual than most people my age, but not equating religion with spiritual. This. Basically, the book talks about talks about the future and the past. It talks about your ego and how, like, if you think about it, right, your ego is created. Ego is something that you create for yourself. Like, you don't. No one else has an ego for you. Like, your friend doesn't have your ego. Like, you have your own ego, and that ego is pretty much created by like your past, right, and and your future, and like what you think you're gonna be, where you think you're gonna be. Your ego is create like it's completely made up by you and what you think of yourself. Ego is not a good thing. Having an ego. Ego. not mean you're presumptuous or anything like that but just overall it, whether your ego is good or bad it's just it's not something that you should want or something that you should have in order to like feel fulfilled and have like the most joy in in yourself I guess I don't know how I'm really trying to explain this but your ego is completely created by yourself and it's like created from the experiences that you've had in the past and, and the things you've accomplished right like when you accomplish something or you suck at something like that that builds up and creates your ego. It manifests kind of inside yourself. And what it is, is like that, it's just basically saying the ego is not real. It's something that you create in yourself and you put pressure on in yourself to keep creating and keep working with it. And it's like, it talks about thinking about just the now because like your past is your past and your future is your future. Neither of them are actually real, right? Neither of them are anything you could change. Neither of them are anything that you can predict. Like you could think about your future all you want. You could think about your past all you want, but you're not that person. Like you're not who you are in the past. You don't have to do the exact same things that you would do in your past. And your future is completely made up. It's only of the things that you create your ego with. Like your ego is created. It's like, oh, I'm really good at this. So that's going to boost my ego. And that means like in the future, I'm going to be able to use this to create this and all this kind of bullshit that you like tell yourself. When and in reality, your ego's not real. Your future is not real in the sense that what your future is like in your mind, right? If obviously the future is going to come, but like what you think it is or how you think it's going to be, it's pointless to think about. And it's pointless to like, a lot of your pain comes from a lot of your pain in life, like emotions and, and those kind of things come from the fact that all you do is think about your past, your future, and your ego. Basically, you realizing that none of that is real, that your ego isn't actually real, it's not the same way that other people think about you, or no one really cares about your ego, right? Because it's something you create in yourself. It's, it's being able to realize that like in your mind, what you're saying to yourself over and over again about your future, about your ego is not even real. It's just you making that up, and it's being able to like stay in the thought of now. And now is like the only thing you actually have that's actually like, real and there and it's, it's like super deep and super spiritual in that way but the more i read the more it makes sense and it's like when something crazy happens to you in your life rather than listening to the thoughts in your head that starts manifesting all these crazy thoughts that aren't actually real like oh my god this happened like now my future is fucked like what does this do to my ego 
you sit back and you like kind of just take in how that situation makes you feel like turn off your brain like you're gonna hear a million things kind of chirping in your brain about like you're pissed now you're angry you're emotional you're gonna do something reckless but just like turn that mind off realize that you're listening to your head right realize that what that's that's coming through in your head is your mind and it's your ego it's not actually like you who you are as a person like you're able to kind of step outside of it and realize that you're listening to your own head I don't know this probably sounds fucking crazy but think about it like think about the next few thoughts that come out of your head listen to them and realize that you're listening to them and realize that like you are not those actual thoughts those are just being created and manifested inside your brain and the point is to live now stop listening to those thoughts stop listening to your ego and your future and just realize that now and and the feelings that you kind of have at the present moment is like all you have to live off of and if you live in that moment you'll be able to realize that the emotions going on in your body like what they are and how to kind of not cope with them but realize what they are and just be able to live with them and that's how you find true i guess joy as they would say that's how you're living in the now is by not being so wrapped up in these thoughts that aren't actually real that had to have sounded fucking crazy but i Something I would probably suggest, I, I wouldn't suggest it for people who are not really trying to get into that kind of thing because it's a tough book to get into if you have no idea like what I'm talking about at all. It's pretty spiritual, so I would work on figuring out what you like, the things you like, enjoy doing, and then once you're in more of like a spiritual state, I guess, then check this book out. But if you're like, this is that was ridiculous, I wouldn't waste your time reading the book, to be honest. So I'm actually driving my sister's car. Since she lives in uh, New York, she doesn't she doesn't need a car because she's in the city. Last week when I was driving in to have dinner in Soho to meet up with my possible future mentor, now mentor, Dan, I actually got into a car accident. Some lady turned right, I was going straight. She was coming the opposite way, made a left turn and turned right into the front of my car. It's become a mess because she's fucking trying to put in a claim through my insurance saying it was my fault, which is absurd. But uh, either way, I'm driving my sister's car right now. It's like a 01 Honda Civic, something bike bike in the day and for some reason i guess because we restarted the battery or got it i don't know something happened and there's no radio it's like this is like a known problem with old hondas or honda civics or accords or whatever the radio locks because it's like an anti-theft thing so you can't put it on you have to get the serial code from the radio and then you have to like call up a honda dealership or pay online or something to give you the code to get into your radio something ridiculous so for the last like week or so i've been driving around literally just in silence because the radio doesn't work at all i didn't realize how much i missed podcasts until i didn't have them coming through my uh car because that like almost every morning i would drive around for a little while and listen to a new podcast or two and that's like the easiest way for me to digest that kind of content I don't know, I need to be doing something passive like walking on the treadmill or just driving. Now I don't have that capability, so I've just been playing it from my phone and like letting it sit in my lap, but like you could barely hear it compared to the radio and it's killing me. I don't know, it's a pain in the ass. I don't know what I'm doing about my car. We don't know, it might be totaled. I, the accident wasn't really that bad, but the front of my car got kind of messed up, so I'll keep y'all posted. March 15th, Thursday morning, around 10 a.m. Probably gonna get a little personal here. I never really talk about, you know, obviously I get personal on this channel and I like to share most of the shit that goes on, but I almost never talk about significant others or girls or like anything like that. Because one, if I had talked about girls in my past, you guys would probably have been like, wow, you're a piece of shit. Two, I don't like to talk about girls that I actually like out of respect to people that they know or we both know or something. And if something doesn't work out, you know, I just, I, know, I I'd rather leave that part out. Unless it became really serious and that person became part of this, you know. So if you've been following, I was with, um, I was with a girl for the last few months. We, we broke things off last night and uh, me and her go back a while. We met like two two years ago over two years ago now we had been on and off for a while trying to make it work but it was always something came up or it was bad timing or you know something would happen and we would kind of break it off but it always felt like we left something on the table and had timing been better or something been different you know 
things would have worked out that way and things would have worked out better and we would have been happily ever after. And when I got back from California, we finally were like, listen, let's try this for real. Let's give it, you know, what we have and let's see where it goes. I really liked this girl for a long time. I really did. I'm pretty sad about it. At the same time, I've liked this girl for like, basically since we met, like two years now. But we were both living our lives, right? I've been doing a lot of stuff business-wise and traveling and doing all this stuff. It was what it was and I kinda had forced myself to move on. When I finally got back, we both decided that we wanted to give this everything we had and see where it went. As I said, we broke it off last night and it didn't work out. And it really sucks. And I talk about on this channel sometimes like the thought of regret and that is why i do a lot of this shit because i don't want to um i don't want to live with regret when i'm older and i think that's the number one way that i make choices and i make decisions and i do everything based on what i'm gonna regret the least everything i do business wise everything i do in my life i say to myself you know if you don't do this are you going to regret it like when you're 35 are you gonna be like fuck like really deep down in your heart are you gonna be like wow i really wish when i was 25 i did this and that's how i operate most of my life so um with this girl it always felt like that it always was like damn i wish i had given it more or i wish i didn't do this so that we could have figured things out and i'm i'm sad that it's over but you know we're two different people uh we're going two different places i'm sad but not compared to how it had been for the last couple years between us when me and her split the last few times i was sad because i lived with regret and i felt like i could have given it more to see where it went or sacrifice other things. So I'm sad now that it's over, but only because I had wish it worked out, but I know that it couldn't. I know that it wasn't going to work out. So I'm not regretting what I did. I'm not regretting how it was. It's almost like there's a, a weight lifted off my chest and no way do I mean like she was a burden to me, but it's like, she had been in my head for for a long time so it's like a chapter of my life is kind of closing like anything in life you know you take the good with the bad and you move on and you learn why it didn't work and the next person that you meet that you find like you figure out you know what it is you like what it is you don't like and what it is you want to have in the future you know so it's like it is what it is but as you can see, I'm so I'm crying like a little bitch right now. But uh, it's only because it, me and her had gone on for so long. So, it's, like I said, it's over two years at this point. We were not dating for the two years, and it finally got to the point where we found closure. And it's just sad, you know, that a part of part of who you were for so long is kind of not going to be there anymore. Uh, so again, though, you figure out why it didn't work, what was wrong with it, and you move forward. And I can't, I'm not going to live with regret because I gave it what I had and it didn't work out. And that's how you guys should, should live too. It's, it's, it's freeing. It's, it's real. I would have regretted not trying it again with her just because I believed, you know, at the time when we started up again, a few months ago, I believed that we could have had something really, really good, really special. And it was good for a while, but you know, eventually things happened and it didn't work out. So that's that. And I know it, especially, I'm sure all you guys have dealt with breakups before about people you really cared about. <clears throat> and it's about a lot of the times when you end a relationship like this, you feel like a piece of you is going with it. And you feel like, you know, you'll, you'll never be the same or you're not gonna find somebody again or you're not gonna find somebody as good, but you know, you will. Um, you just have to keep yourself open, work on yourself more than trying to look for other people, right? If you work on yourself and if you become the best version of yourself in all aspects of life, I don't mean like, oh, now I gotta drop 10 pounds to look good for all the girls I'm gonna try to pick up. Just be who you are, be the best version of yourself, try to get better every day, and I think the right people will come and go in your life, you know? If for some reason it didn't work out because this person didn't see how good of a heart you had or blah, 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 you know, someone will, someone eventually will. And just, just be yourself, be open to meeting new people always. And you know, before you know it, things will manifest inside. You'll get over it. Time, time heals all that is facts. So I'm sorry if this got a little personal, but I just wanted to kind of share how I was feeling with you guys. This is real life. This is the shit people deal with. Just want to let you know if you're feeling the same way, everyone goes through it. It's not fun. It sucks. I don't like feeling like this, but I know tomorrow will come. The sun will rise. I will move on eventually and uh i'm just gonna try to do what i do do things that i enjoy doing and keep moving forward and keep living i feel can't stand it mm, maybe i don't understand this you're changing i can't stand it my heart can't take this damage in the way i feel can't stand it mm, maybe i don't understand
understand it. 